That's why we'll do it that way. Uh, we believe in the covenant. Uh, we believe in the covenant of one man and one woman forming a union under God, as first mentioned in God's Torah. Torah is the first five books of the Bible. Um, we here believe in the law of first mention. We believe that. Yes, we read the New Testament as well as the Old Testament. We believe the New Testament is a fulfilling of the Old Testament, not a replacement of the Old Testament. Um, because Jesus said, I came to fulfill the law. Uh, is it? Well, uh, well, we'll be talking about it in the second service. I know I, it, 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 there's a, uh, in Jeremiah 31, I think it's verses 31 to 34. It, it, what Jeremiah is talking about is the purpose of the Old and New Testament. <laughs> so we'll talk about that in the second service because of what our topic is. But so we, so again, we believe in a covenant between one man and one woman because that's what the scripture says. Law first mentioned, you know, male and female created he them. And the two shall become one flesh. Because the whole purpose, our original purpose and design was to be fruitful and multiply. So aside from one man and one woman, you're not, you can't produce fruit. You know, you can't plenish the earth. So that's why we believe that. I mean, I know it's a lot of artificial uh, things that people do these days. Um, I'm not, if you notice, I don't really get into what everybody does. I don't get it. We're not going to get we're not going to spend all the time with politics and everything that's going on out there. I'm not saying it's not important. I'm not saying I'm not aware of it. I have a wife. My wife keeps me abreast of what's going on out there. Um, but again, if we've gotten all the word that we're getting and we're, we're solid in, in where we are with the word, I guess we got time for all the news. But generally, we, we're going to replace our word time. We're getting caught up in... in, in all the affairs of the world. This is, you know, you, when you do that, you get caught up in, a, in perspectives. So if we get in here and we talk about politics, uh, some people in here are Republican and some are Democrat. Uh, I have a, a background in politics because of uh, my uncle was in politics 20 something years. Uh, and actually, the last church I was at, that particular pastor, that was, you know, he. Spend time with the president, uh, Bush, you know, um, spend time with Bush. He spent time with, you know, I mean, he was, what, what do they call, what was it? Huh? No, it was like, a, what they would do is in your particular region, they have uh, forms. So, uh, so they might have a Republican form or, de or a Democratic form. So they'll have representatives of that, um, was it, what do you call her? What is Republican? Um, a representative of that uh, party. party. Thank you. <laughs> it's been up early. All right, so representatives of that party, but they'll debate like for the party. You know, so so our pastor was all up into that. I mean, he was one of the people they he represented the Republicans, and so. But the, what I noticed though. Even, you know, um, you know, some of my family might be watching this. I'm not for or against. And then we got uh, people here we're close to. It's very hard in politics to draw a line in the sand. You won't, you won't get voted for. See, to, to win, you got to be play both sides. To win. Now, if you don't want to win, pick a side. But if you want to, so if you see somebody win in office, they have to open themselves up to something that the other party may be with because you, you winning based on a majority vote. So they may, so that like, y'all be like, but I thought he was Christian. Why did he go for that? Because he wanted to get those votes <laughs> to get in office. So that's why we, we don't get into stuff like that. And, you know, uh, all this fighting and campaigning of, 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 who who and wh and who should be doing what? Um, we'll just go with what the Bible says, right? So one a covenant of one man and one woman. We believe in the law first mentioned. Again, a lot of this is why we believe what we believe, but it's our statement of faith. So it's why we believe what we believe. So we're not telling nobody else what to believe. We would probably like to, but this is why we believe whatever the word says, uh, chapter and verse, right? 
And then uh, we believe, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't give you no scriptures, did I? Uh, <laughs> Genesis 2.18 says it's not good for man to be alone. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Covenant of one man. I gave you Genesis 2.18 through 25 is, is uh, it's not good for man to be alone. The two shall become one flesh, and they were both naked before one another. And then uh, uh, Ephesians 5 and 1 Peter 3 talks about a husband of one wife. Uh, not, you know, 10, 15 wives. See, law first mentioned. One man and one woman. That was the law first mentioned. As, as it got crazy, you notice after the tree is when people started to consider maybe a couple wives might be cool. Well, it looked like you struggling having a child. Hey, well, we, hey, we just used the handmaiden. We, hey, that's a good idea. So they started adding all this extra because, again, now they're, they, they're, they're, they're attached to the world, so the adversary has access to their mind and stuff like that. Before that, they was just rolling with God. Okay? So if God wanted it to be multiple, that would have been the first thing he created. He's the creator, right? He created two animals and, and all these different things. So as a creator, he could have said, okay, it's not good for man to be alone. Uh, let us make a harem. <laughs> you know, it, he gave him a wife for a reason. All right, so I think God knew what he was doing. Uh, we believe in preparing for marriage through tools of counsel. We believe in preparing for marriage through tools of counsel. So, again, uh, most of us that's been hurt or that's carrying some type of pain or struggle, a lot, a lot of times it's through uh, uh, relationships and parenting. Um, you know, the, my primary years of bitterness was because I was left with foster parents through, because you had two parents that was married but didn't know how. You know what I'm saying? So, and then they didn't know how because they didn't have a model of how. All right, so we want, we offer for everyone to be prepared. Now, once again, the scripture talks about, uh, it talks about, Paul said, I'd rather you be single. He says, uh, he says, like, you know, he says, I'd rather you be single. He says, but it's probably better to marry than to burn. So, it's in, it's, so it's, again, it's better to be married than to live in shacking up and compromising things of that nature. So our, ideally, we want everybody to go through counseling. But there's people that I'm getting married. So, so what we've had is we've had situations. Uh, I've, I've had situations across, you know, across the country. So I had a situation where there was a coach. So when they showed up, they were getting married. So they, they didn't show up like, teach us how to be married. And then this guy was a division one coach. So they only had one month out of the year, everybody got married. Because there was no other month that they were free because of recruiting and different things like that. So, so they showed up in, let me see, they showed up in like May, and the month, I think, was June that they were free. I think it was June. So, so they had the venue and everything. So I said, oh, okay. I said, well, I can do some crash counseling. I said, y'all going to have to get up 7 in the morning, uh, and you're going to have to do it every day. I said, and you still probably won't get everything, so we probably have to do some post counseling. I said, but I'll do that. So after we went through it, then they said, well, we got one more request. Could you do the wedding? I said, well, normally we at the church I was at. Normally, I, we wouldn't do this. I said, but uh, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll just talk to the pastor, you know, because I, I wasn't just trying to. I was extending uh, a level of authority to even counsel them. So I ended up marrying them, and, but I didn't have a problem with marrying them because they would get married anyway. So, one, they had the opportunity to have a man of God with a solid relationship with God, and then they had the opportunity to get some counsel. So it's important that... Um, uh, that it's important to get counsel. The more you get, the better prepared you are. <laughs> so we're not trying to, you're not trying to rush into marriage, uh, which some people do. So uh, like, cause we, and here, especially the people that grow here, we, we want people to get it because if they don't get it on the front end, then we got to do a lot of work on the back end. <laughs> cause you're going to get it. It's just <laughs> when you decide, or you may not get it. You may just, you know, just blow up a relationship. People decide to do that too. And the reason why is uh, going back to Genesis 2.18, the Bible says it's not good for man to be alone. 
Why? Because Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, you're tempted to lean to your own understanding. Scripture says, lean not to your own understanding. I mean, I, I, was, I was watching one of the uh, teachings, and, <laughs> and so uh, I, was, I was editing the video the other day, so it just made a lot of sense because I was listening too. You know, y- y'all already heard it, but I was listening. it made a lot of sense like, okay, the Scripture says, lean not to your own understanding. So why do we lean to our own understanding? Why is that even an option? If the Bible says lean not to your own understanding, what in your mind tells you that that doesn't apply to you? It just says, it says it's not good for a man to be alone. What in your mind tells you it's okay for you to isolate yourself? Because the Bible says it's not good for you to be alone. So, So how do we derive our options? That's why you can't be alone because you lean to your own understanding. You think uh, it doesn't apply to you, but it does. Luke, 4, Luke 14, 28, it, it talks about counting the cost. Who builds a house and doesn't count the cost? So, who, so again, if, uh, before you even have a, a, a home or a house, you're establishing a marriage to move into that. So who starts out on a marriage, what he's saying, and don't prepare themselves, don't know everything that they're going into, don't equip themselves. Um, and that's what's so tough. It's not like people are tripping. We've had some great conversations with some people where actually uh, testimony the Mervins gave the other day, it wasn't like they were evil people. There's some stuff they just didn't know. See, so what, and, and it wasn't like, you know, we'll let, we'll let them tell you. It wasn't like they came to us and we like, What's wrong with y'all? <laughs> no, it wasn't like, what's wrong with y'all? I was like, oh, okay, cool. This is how we think anyway. Like, oh, y'all just don't know this. Oh, we just get, need to give you this. Oh, all y'all need is this. You know, it's, it's not as complicated as we make it. And counsel is not to uh, bust you out or, you know, people be high from counsel because they don't want to look bad. But then that's, re- you know, it really doesn't make sense. Like, you need to get what you need. So the scripture talks about preparing. Um, uh, so I'm not going to get too much more into that. 35, it says, we believe in equipping and empowering God's gifts for perfecting other saints for the work of the ministry. So that's Ephesians 4.11. And uh, we have a unique position. Uh, I, was, I was talking to a, a friend out of town. He was asking about the church. I said, well, the church is doing fine. I said, we're busy. I said, but we're doing fine. I said, I said, it's a, it's a, I said, it's different. Uh, And sometimes people don't know why it's different. I said, it's different because we started with just me and my wife. I said, normally when you start a church, you start with a team. So you already, really, when you start with a team, you already have a church. When you have 12 to 20 people, you already got a church. You already got church. You already got resources because you start with, you know, I have a friend. This is, this is how they started the church. They sat down and they talked and they said, okay, uh, all right, so who, who are we working with? And they said, what well, they're working with. And, they, and, they, and what they did was they tallied out what their tithe was and determined the building they got. Just so happened they get, got a building that they had to pay for six months. Um, and then they just start growing from there. But they wasn't, like in our case, we were believing for a miracle for the first building because we ain't had no members. So if you have no members, you only have one tither. Well, two tithers, but same from the same household, me and my wife. That's it. You know, and at first I didn't even know I was supposed to do that. I was sending tithes back to the other church. <laughs> like, you know, like when we first came, I sent like $575 back. And uh, so, I, so I was driving one day and I was like, so I wonder when I start tithing to the church. And so I called a pastor friend of mine. He says, uh, how did you take care of the, uh, what is it, the uh, uh, registered church with Secretary of State? You opened your accounts. He said, you, uh, you, you, you done websites and all this stuff. He said, how did you take care of all that stuff? He said, the uh, 501C3. He says, how would you do all that? I said, I was just using my money. He said, duh. <laughs> I said, hmm, never thought about it. Because I was telling the person we're in a unique position because, again, we have to establish, uh, me and my wife was talking about it this week. Imagine you move someplace you don't know nobody and you start a church. You don't know, you don't know nobody. Like, so you don't know who to do what. No one's been vetted. And then 
We're in North, we're Charlotte, North Carolina.